Meniere's disease. Meniere's disease is also known as endolymphatic hydrops, which was described first of all by Prosper Meniere in 1861, which was developed also known as endolymphatic hydrops. And then for the first time in 1861, and what are the epidemiological determinant? It is usually seen in male more than female. Usually affected age group is 35 to 60 years of age. It is usually unilateral. And uh, later on after few years, both of the year, after few years, both year gets affected by the Meniere's disease. So this was this was all for the introduction portion. Now coming to the symptoms. Symptoms include look, you should remember B, D, T, and A. B means vertigo, and what type of vertigo? Is spontaneous sudden vertigo, which usually persists for a shorter duration that is few minutes to hour, means up to thirty minutes to uh, twenty four hours. Sudden in onset is spontaneous, regresses on itself um, 30 minutes to 24 hours. Its duration can be this is for deafness. Deafness. This was vertigo. Vertigo, deafness, tinnitus, and oral fullness. Oral fullness. B, D, T, A. And what type of tinnitus? It usually presents with low pitched sound swishing type of sound is heard in tinnitus and deafness is always sensory neural hearing loss so this was all for the symptoms regarding sign when we examine through otoscope otoscopy shows there is normal tympanic membrane or normal tympanic membrane and because of the sensory neural hearing loss when we do renees renees means all those vibratory tuning for test then rene shows air conduction more than bone conduction uh, weber shows that uh, the vibration is lateralizes to the better ear and air bone conduction test shows air bone conduction test shows uh, there is decreased in conduction usually decreased and uh, for the um, under examination process uh, we should know uh, okay let us uh, let it be that much now coming to the investigation uh, how, what are the investigation then there is a there is a group of investigation that should be performed to detect mini asteris so uh, we regarding uh, how to remember that we need to remember a we need to remember a, a mnemonics for investigation investigation so what is that that is mm, for uh, gilchrist look gc means gilchrist gilchrist hits every faster f a s t e r faster and spinner and now it's all done if you remember this then it's all uh, the investigation related to the miniers this is what does G stands for? Glycerol test. Glycerol means when glycerol is introduced into the patient of a Meniere's disease, then the pure tone audiometry gets very uh, uh, better. Means he and the pure tone audiometry shows um, the hearing loss has in improved. Means PTA is improved by more than. PTA improves more than 10 decibel and speech discrimination increases by 15% speech discrimination more than 15% and look uh, there is uh, no. summation potential to action potential because the ratio of the Meniere's disease mein, uh, more than 35 uh, 30 30% but it gets decrease so this decrease when glycerol is introduced into the um, Meniere's disease patient so this test is very significant for Meniere's disease now coming to the caloric test while performing caloric test 
means introducing hot and warm water cold and what warm water in the patient's ear it shows that there is decreased in sensation of the water means uh, after uh, introducing that hot or cold water we see for the uh, we see for the amount that is producing vertigo or nystagmus in the patient but as he is a meniere stages patient the amount is increased the normal amount of the normal person uh, can tolerate up to 5 ml but after that he produces vertigo and nystagmus but uh, in many years patient the amount is increased so there is decreased sensation this is the caloric test now coming to faster f means fistula test when we perform fistula test by pressing the tragus or by seagull speculum in by um, seagull speculum which creates a pressure and creates a pressure in the external auditory canal as a result uh, and we see for the response in the vertigo and nystagmus this is called as fistula test and while performing fistula test we get false positive result for meniere stages that is also known as hennigold sign now coming to audiometry uh, audiometric test this is for audiometric test this is for uh, recruitment test like um, si si sort increment Uh, test and this is tone decay test tone decay test tone decay and um, this is electrocochleography electrocochleography and this electrocochleography shows the ratio of summation potential to the excel potential becomes has become more than 30% so uh, this is also very diagnostic and at last uh, the spin is p means what speech audiometry p means pure tone audiometry and uh, n means n means uh, n means the tuning fork test means uh, oh sorry n is the nystagmus this was speech discrimination test seeing for the speech this is pta and this one is the nystagmus and what type of nystagmus we see usually the nystagmus first component the first component of the nystagmus is towards the diseased ear then in this way these are the investigation then look and there is a further uh, for the next important point regarding the meniere stages is the cause behind the meniere stages look how to remember this all the cause in a single line is uh, like this how do you remember this uh, it is by a s a b e savior s and i d look what is happening you can remember it as a story like what gil crest hits every faster as well as spinner then what does that faster bowler do or spinner bowler they save their s and id so now it's very easy to remember s means sac that is endolymphatic sac endolymphatic sac said that there could be either absorptional deafness look i am going to erase this introduction of symptom with look s was for sac sac is endolymphatic sac there is abnormality in the endolymphatic sac either it could be a small in size there could be any obstruction in the sac uh, or any any ischemia in the sac this was s then comes the autoimmune disease autoimmune disease uh, and vv viral infection viral infection includes herpes herpes virus is by endocrine defect endocrine defect is either thyroid deficiency adrenal deficiency or pituitary deficiency this all includes it this all can cause meniere stages now the other a is for the energy look the other is a is for the energy and s s means there is when the sympathetic activities of a person 
sympathetic activity of a person is increased then it can cause meniosis because the production is increased in such a condition and in the uh, there is id means idiopathic and idiopathic should be kept at the top because it is the most common idiopathic is the most common type so this was the cause of the case then if you want to remember the whole meniosus in a single line then gilchrist hits all the faster and spinner bowler so they run away by save their s and id and uh, how does they present uh, when they run away they show b d t a symptom uh, vertigo deafness tinnitus and overall fullness now coming to the broad um, topic that is the treatment modality of the meniosus disease treatment modality includes both medical and surgical treatment first of all speaking about the medical treatment um, we need to there could be two context of uh, treating those uh, patient that is either for the acute attack or for the chronic attack or uh, chronic attack okay chronic phase meniosus disease if a patient comes to you uh, with a acute attack of a meniosus disease okay then how you will treat them then first of all the from acute stage acute patient is treated by reassurance by giving reassurance bed rest and um, head support rook reassurance is head support and bed rest this is the first step for you look after this what are the drugs you will provide them then vestibular sedative is given look sedative and what are those example prochlorperazine you should remember at least one drug prochlorperazine is is given to the meniosus patient other could be either vasodilators like carbogen or beta histine can be given example carbogen you are given and or histamine drip can be given histamine drip can be given look now if a chronic um, chronic stage patient chronic patient of meniosus disease comes to you then how you will treat first of all or the dietary restriction needed to needed for a person should be done diet should be maintained exercise should be um, so should be advised to him other drugs are vestibular sedative is prescribed to him vestibular vasodilator is given diuretic a diuretic diuretics is added dexomethasone is added dexomethasone and elimination should be uh, allergen should be allergen should be eliminated means if you can uh, find out the allergen and the other is a very significant and new discovery is the miniet device look what does this miniet device does this miniet device creates low pressure pulse generator what does this does uh, this pressure pulse is transmitted to the round window via grommet miniet device causes a pressure generation low pressure generation that is transmitted to the round window via a grommet and what does it causes it displaces the endolymph as a result the hydrops get resolved this is low pressure generator and where does it generate its pressure it usually generates to the round window and this round window when it is mm, uh, exerts some pressure then the the high endolymphatic hydrops Uh, gets in circulation and it is usually relieved so now coming to the major portion that is surgical treatment of the meniosus disease surgical treatment can be done either by preserving both hearing and valence or by preserving only hearing and um, ablate ablating the by ablation of the valence or by the ablation of both hearing and valence mechanism look i am first of all i am preserving the hearing hearing plus ablation uh, sorry uh, balance both are preserved now only hearing is preserved and at last ablation of the both i am doing means no hearing no balance then what is the uh, what is the method for uh, doing 
for preserving both hearing and balance that is either I can decompress the sac sac K decompression can be done or uh, I can shunt the sac with subarachnoid space shunting that is called as shunting of the sac or I can cut out the sac saculotomy saculotomy and discharge and by cochlear piercing or by piercing via round window this was the method for uh, if we do this then the both are preserved now coming to the uh, hearing preservation of the hearing but ablation of the balance region what is the method for that we can do either chemical labyrinthectomy look chemical labyrinthectomy vestibular neurectomy or vestibular end organ destruction but we will study about chemical labyrinthectomy what is the chemical used for chemical labyrinthectomy that is tetracycline sorry gentamicin drug is used as a chemical gentamicin is introduced uh, in the uh, trans tympanic region intra tympanic means this is introduced intra tympanic which causes uh, the uh, labyrinth um, labyrinthectomy via chemical that is gentamicin now coming to the last portion that is uh, the ablation of hearing and balance both is seen in this and what are the method that is section of eighth nerve eighth nerve cutting down and other could be total labyrinthectomy or total labyrinthectomy can be performed for this so this was the surgical method hearing only preserved nothing is preserved chemical labyrinthectomy is studied here and then so this this is all for surgical portion along with Meniere's disease at last we should know the differential diagnosis for the rule outing other disease that is similar to the uh, Meniere's disease what are those that could be either migraine or basilar migraine migraine or basilar migraine that could be autoimmune disease in the inner ear and autosclerosis autosclerosis or autoimmune disease of inner ear or it can be either syphilis syphilis can also syphilis or coban syndrome coban syndrome basilar insufficiency vestibular basilar insufficiency or there could be head trauma head trauma or acoustic neuroma so these are the differential diagnosis needed to be ruled out while treating or diagnosing many as disease migraine basilar migraine uh, autoimmune inner, inner ear disease and um, syphilis coban vestibular basilar insufficiency head trauma and acoustic neuroma thank you